word of god speaks to us like this those conflicts and disputes among you where do they come from do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you my dear brothers and sisters the lord says through this word of god we all are craving for something mostly we crave for love we all crave for something and we don't get it we get disappointed as a result there are conflicts and disputes among our families among ourselves among our society because we all have some cravings it is part of our life these cravings is it's a part of our life for example a baby when the baby is born in the womb of the mother mother gives the maximum support and love and care and everything in the womb mother is taking care of the baby in the best way possible but still baby is not happy enough or satisfied enough and that is why the baby comes out to this world when the baby comes out to this world and baby gets the not only mother's love but also father's love and after some time when the baby is brought up the child is brought up with the love of the mother love of the father but still not happy with these and therefore the child is exposed to the friends and so many friends and the so many friends love from that limited love of the father and mother the child is going out to receive the love of the friends and after some time the friends love is not satisfied is not satisfied with the friends love and then is the baby is craving for an intimate love and that is the reason the love of the marriage marriage relationship is coming to that point but after marriage still these people human beings are not happy still craving for more and more but they since they cannot have any other intimacies then the least this love is manifested in craving for name fame money power position pleasures because people are not happy with what they are and they are craving for more and more and this is seen everywhere they try to get money but money is not satisfying them they're trying to get fame and name but even the fame and name is not satisfying them they try to satisfy their body with the pleasures of the flesh even that is not satisfying them and that is when human beings at the end turn towards god himself and only god can satisfy we read gospel of john chapter 7 verse 37 john chapter 7 verse 37 we read like this chapter 7 verse 37 we read on the last day of the festival the great day while jesus was standing there he cried out let anyone who is thirsty come to me let anyone who is thirsty come to me let anyone who is having cravings for love appreciation acceptance come to me only in jesus christ we will be satisfied until and unless we end up in jesus christ we will search for we will have cravings for love and appreciation acceptance and the pleasures of this world and when we don't get it surely we will never get it but when we don't get it we will end up in conf- conflicts and arguments and disputes in our families and our relationships everywhere but when you fall in the love of jesus that is where you will be satisfied we will be comforted my dear brothers and sisters let's examine our conscience do we still have these cravings for acceptance cravings for fame cravings for name cravings for love cravings for any kind of pleasure of the body not happy with what we are and we still need more and more that means we have not found the real perfection we have not found jesus christ maybe you are in prayer maybe you go to church every day maybe you join in the live streaming every day but still if you have the craving for love and you have complaining that nobody loves me no one cares for me there is i don't have enough money i don't have these i don't have these if you have these complaints still that means you have not found jesus in your personal life 
you have not yet experienced the love of god in your heart jesus says today through this word of god let anyone who is thirsty come to me let anyone who is thirsty come to me the lord is speaking to you and me my dear brothers and sisters when i say come to me i mean when jesus says come to me you may tell me father i go to jesus every day i pray to every him every day then what does it mean to come to me means come to me means having full trust and confidence in jesus just blind trust and no more worries just tell him you are sufficient for me jesus you are enough for me when you say you are sufficient for me enough for me i have full confidence in you i don't need to worry about anything that is what jesus meant to say when he said come to me let anyone who is thirsty come to me my dear brothers and sisters have you seen in the schools and colleges wherever you, when you study when you have some uh, you know some problem to solve then your teacher say if you have any problem come to me what does it mean we know we don't need to go anywhere else once we go to this teacher we will get all the problems solved the same way the lord says for all the problems that you are into i have solution you may have many solutions and you tried all your solutions and you have given up your hope but the lord says if you have if you are still thirsty come to me i will solve the problems i have solutions for all your problems and this is what the lord is speaking to us today let's close our eyes and pray the lord lord jesus we thank you we are here we come to you lord we believe that you are able to do this many a time we think nobody is there to love us there is no one who can who can solve our problem that we are into lord today you are telling us all those who are thirsty come to me help us to come to you lord sometimes our ego sometimes our lack of faith in you lack of confidence in you block us from coming to you even though we come to you in prayer we don't really trust in you and count on you forgive us lord help us to trust you completely and come to you blindly help us lord we pray for this intention let's all kindly pray together this first decade of the divine mercy with this intention lord we want to come to you with full confidence and trust all human beings have got a tendency even if we get everything we are still not satisfied those who want to get a job until they get a job they are praying praying once they get job after some time they are not happy with the job people are thirsting for a new house and they get a house after they get a house they feel this room is not big enough the uh, rooms are not enough and many inconveniences they find are not happy with that when people get promotions waiting for promotions after they get a promotion they are waiting for the next promotion and this is how human beings when we get a food we want to get them different varieties different thirsty different taste we thirst for it when we enter into watching movies and entertainment the more we watch and enjoy the more we thirst for more and more those who take alcohol and drinks not satisfied with one or two they want more and more and more get addicted to it still not happy we all have a tendency in our heart this is not enough i want more this is not enough i want more that means everyone is craving for more because there is something still missing in our heart some vacuum is still there even those people richest people in the world even they are not happy with what they are they want to become more and more they want to get more and more still they feel something missing inside a vacuum inside if you have this vacuum inside this is how god has created every human being if god has created every human being with a vacuum inside there is a purpose for this vacuum this emptiness 
there is a purpose even from childhood onwards if you watch children you can see everyone is thirsting for more and more even if you give chocolates to children they are not happy with the, what they have they want more more so this i was watching one child who was uh, trying to collect all the chocolates with one hand full next hand and then suddenly keeping in the whole body trying to ca- collect maximum chocolates in the with the whole body and in this process many are falling down and then again trying to check take what is fallen down and then another is fallen down sours is spent just to collect some chocolates because they are showing their real attitude we want more this emptiness this thirst god has created in every human being therefore anything of this world if you try to get it maximum still we will say it's not enough even the love appreciation acceptance whatever may be it not only the material things but even emotional things god has created this because there is a purpose the purpose is this god who wants to stay in that emptiness that emptiness is the place where god has to come and stay only then the fullness will happen and until unless you keep jesus there in that emptiness we will thirst for more and more and more and more will never end thirsting you must have seen the duck duck and the web of the duck if you have happened to notice the web of the duck it is in a, it is created in a special way not like our hands or legs but the web of the duck is different it's like a net that means the moment you see the web of the duck it means there is water somewhere otherwise god will never create the web of the duck like this there is water and the duck has to move in the swim in the water therefore god has created this web of the duck in that special way the same way we have ears god gave us this ear not for a decoration not for us to keep the specs but for us to hear the sound if you have ear that means there is sound somewhere there is sound out there if god has not created sound god would not have created this ear for you and me if there is a ear for sure there is a sound if there is no sound this is not needed therefore if god has created a web there is water if god has created a ear that means there is there is a sound if god has created a mouth and taste and the intestine and all these digestive systems that means there is food outside if there is no food in this world then why did god create this since god has created our mouth and its in digestive system it's a clear sign there is food out there if that's a case if there is a vacuum inside of human beings even though they are they get everything of this world still they are thirsting for something more that means there is something which can satisfy them where somewhere there is something which can satisfy them otherwise god will never create this vacuum inside and that something is no one but jesus himself unless we get jesus in our life we will never be satisfied let's read this word of god psalm 373 was 25 let's read psalm 73 was 25 we read whom have i in heaven but you lord and there is nothing on earth that i desire other than you david says there is nothing on this earth i desire other than you whom have i in heaven but you and there is nothing on earth that i desire than you david is not happy with anything of this world david is searching for god and he knows if he gets god if he get jesus he is happy he is satisfied fully satisfied and let's also read 37 and 4 psalm 37 and verse 4 we read like this 
take delight in the lord he will give you the desires of your heart take delight in the lord let god is your delight let god is your happiness then he will give you your heart's desires all your heart's desires will be fulfilled the moment you take delight in the lord the moment you welcome jesus into your heart every other problem will be solved all the desires will be fulfilled praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus so many brothers and sisters as we have already said in the previous word in the first before the first decade why where this conflict come from this conflict all these confusions are because we have cravings there is emptiness inside we are thirsting for something and therefore since we don't get it some from nowhere we enter into conflict and disputes but the lord says take delight in the lord all your heart's desires will be fulfilled praise the lord praise the lord let's sing together this second decade of the divine mercy chaplet and promise to god lord you are enough for me you are sufficient for me i take delight in you lord you are more than enough for me i'm happy with you lord help me to find only you lord help me to crave only for you lord and your love many brothers and sisters there is a big question that we all ask what is this for or is this is not enough for me this is not enough for me when you get a job after some time you will feel this is not enough for me when you get a house you will say after some time this is not enough for me and when you get friendship connections even your family members you sometimes we feel this is not what i want this is not enough for me sometimes even looking at your life partner we say this is not what i wanted this is not enough for me and sometimes even the food that we eat we still feel this is not enough for me this is a common question that we all have in our heart now in order to satisfy us we have a god if you read in the bible if you check the whole old testament you can see a god who is walking with us god walked with abraham god walked with isaac and jacob and god walked with moses and god even told joshua just like i walked with moses i will walk with you in the whole old testament you can see god is walking with israel walking in front of them walking behind them walking walking along with them you can see god is walking with them in all the whole old testament you can see god is seen outside of human being walking with them either walking in front of them walking above them walking side by side or walking behind them so god is always walking with them not inside but outside of the human body and that is what we see in the old testament but in the new testament you see a different god the same god who walked with abraham isaac jacob moses joshua and all the patriarchs and all the prophets the same god comes in the new testament dwelling inside of a human body that is why we read jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 onwards we read like this when god makes a covenant the days are surely coming says the lord when i will make a covenant new covenant with the house of israel and the house of judah when the messiah comes i will make a new covenant and when this new covenant how is this new covenant was 32 it will not be like the covenant that i made with their ancestors when i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt a covenant that they broke though i was their husband says the lord was 33 but this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my law within them i will write it on their hearts and i will be their god and they shall be my people i will be their god from inside i will put my law inside this is the promise we read let's also read colossians chapter 1 verse 27 colossians chapter 1 verse 27 we read like this in the word of god to them 
God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory Christ is in you the riches of glory of this mystery that is Christ is in you God is inside of us God dwells with us so this is the difference between old testament and new testament in the old testament god walks with human being but in the new testament god is inside of us what does it mean it means you have a brain not only the brain of you have you have the brain of our lord jesus too you have your hands not only your hands you have the hands of jesus too you have your legs not only your legs you have the legs of jesus too you have a heart not only your heart the heart of jesus in you too this is something when you believe this this makes you satisfied this makes you supernatural this makes you something special look at mother teresa mother teresa had a just like all of us she also had a heart but it was not on not only her heart the heart of jesus too in her when she when she identified the heart of jesus in her her heart was so big enough to accommodate millions thousands and millions of poor people in this world and she single handedly built up such a powerful ministry of missionaries of charity congregation all over the world influenced hundred and many many countries hundreds of people hundreds of leaders gentiles because she knew she has not only her heart she has the heart of jesus too she has not only her hands she has the hands of jesus too so this is the difference between old testament and new testament my dear brothers and sisters old testament god was walking with them new testament god is inside of us therefore we are not alone my dear brothers and sisters in this world we can see lots of partiality we see some people are born in poor family but in the neighborhood another person is born in a rich family so the one who is born in a poor family will always feel why did god make me be born in this family why not not that family how come that boy is born in that family why not in this family so this is a natural question where everyone feel because this is not our choice we are born in this family they are born in their family some are born in poor family some are born in the rich family not because of any merit of theirs because god just chose us to be in those families some of you are born in very rich family some of you are attending this live streaming from a poor family you can't even afford to pay the data of the mobile with which you watch this live streaming my dear brothers and sisters you may ask this question how come i am born in this family why not in a rich family the same question may ask there are some people who are born as perfect in the worldly sense but some people are born with all the disabilities and different shape and different color different size and different things are lacking in their personal life and they also may ask the same question why did god create me like this why did god create them like this so called perfection how come i have imperfections so you can see these kind of um, differences in every part of the human body human lives in order to solve this problem there is only one answer the answer is this whether you are rich and poor whether you are able or disabled god the father has given jesus christ in every one of us equally therefore he will balance everything that is lacking he is the perfection of everyone and the moment he is there inside you don't need to compare yourself with anyone you can see 
those who are weak in the ordinary time in front of the world who was powerful when they were in connection with when they were in Jesus Christ you can see so many examples so powerful they are there are so many saints whom we know personally they were so weak but when god is inside they became so good and powerful we can a uh, one example saint cupertino he was just a caretaker of cattle in a convent in a, in a monastery he was not good in studies at all all his friends and everyone who was well studied and well degrees and doctorates and and become priest but he was just taking care of his cattle in a monastery but he was so connected to god and god was inside jesus was inside later he was spotted by the bishop and bishop selected him and made him a seminarian and he studied and he could not study well and in the exam time the only thing that he knew by heart was the only question he was asked to answer and then thus he passed the exam and he became a priest and one of the greatest saints in the catholic church a flying monk he became a flying monk with the gift of levitations in front of the whole world he was nothing but god was with him god was in him therefore he became high john maria viani was not a good student he always failed and in front of the world he is a defeated failed person but only because of his prayer life bishop accepted him and made him a bitch priest and was sent to a lonely abandoned village a parish as the parish priest and he did his service with fullness of his heart and he kept jesus in his heart and that ours the uh, the parish ours became one of the most prominent parishes in whole of france people came all over from europe to meet this priest my dear brothers and sisters we can also see in the prodigal son story the younger one collected all his property and went and he enjoyed his life and spoiled everything he could not enjoy in fact and when he came back father gave him everything that he lost and the elder one felt rejected he found whatever that is remaining with the father remaining in the property remaining things belongs to him he could not accept that father was sharing everything with his younger brother he complained and he said you did not even give me young goat you gave a big cat fatted calf to this man who spoiled everything but you did not give me a young god then father what did he say father said all what is mine is yours i am there for you is that not enough for you i am there for you is that not enough for you my dear brothers and sisters all those who are complaining looking at your neighbor the lord is asking you i am there for you is that not enough for you all what is mine is yours i am there for you is that not enough for you let's ask this question the lord is asking you and me i am there for you is that not enough for you why are you comparing yourself with others and being unhappy why are you feeling that it, you have nothing and you are thirsting for more and more i am there i am there for you is that not enough for you why are you looking at your neighbor looking at your siblings looking at your friends and say they all are far better they all have everything they all are enjoying i am like this the lord is asking you i am there for you is that not enough for you galatians chapter 2 verse 20 we read like this the word of god says galatians 2 verse 20 and it is no longer i who live but it is christ who lives in me and the life i now in live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me it is no longer i who live but it is christ who lives in me praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters as i told you in the old testament you can see god walking with us walking next to us walking in front of us walking behind us in the new testament god is in us he works from inside he is moving inside he is acting from inside 
and that is why saint paul says it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus thank you abba father thank you abba father praise you abba father praise you abba father if you know that god is inside of us then our whole attitude and nature will change if we know god is not inside that is when we feel insecure because someone else will be better than us someone else will be given more blessing someone else will be more powerful and someone else will be richer than us someone else will be in more intelligent than us someone else will be getting more degrees and appreciation from us more than us so these confusions will come the moment we know god is not in us but when god we believe that god jesus is in us then our whole attitude changes whole behavior changes from then we are not receivers of anything but we will become givers we will not wait for something but we are ready to give so all those who are complaining for example if someone if you meet someone i don't have these nobody gives me no one loves me no one listens to me no one appreciates me no one comes to me no one cares for me that means you don't believe god is inside of you that means you don't believe jesus inside of you you're not happy or you are not satisfied with anything because you still feel that emptiness vacuum inside but are those people who really feel jesus inside you will never you will no more thirst for anything but you will become giver of everything that is what happened to mother teresa that is what happened to saint vincent de paul that is what happened to saint don bosco that is what happened to all the saints they were busy giving busy giving love you will never see or hear anywhere mother teresa has written like this i nobody loved me no one cared for me no one appreciated me no one loved me but instead she was busy giving love for everyone because she knows she has jesus inside you will never see these things from anyone's life those who have experienced the live life of jesus inside my dear brothers and sisters you are the people of not old testament new testament old testament you can see god walking with the human beings not seen inside of the human being but in the new testament god speaks speaks specifically that i live in you and jesus comes inside of us if anyone has doubt whether jesus is inside of you think about your holy eucharist you believe in the holy eucharist as the presence of jesus you go for holy mass and you with the utmost care and love and holiness you receive the body of christ inside of you and jesus comes inside of you what else you need what else you want to convince you to convince yourself god is inside of you be strong be courageous do not doubt this you don't need anything from outside because the giver of everything is inside of you be happy start changing your life if you believe jesus it's inside of you it will be seen in your outside attitudes and behavior so let's examine our conscience and see do we really believe that god is inside of us if you really believe we will not be receivers anymore but we will be givers from now on let's read jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 the lord is telling you if anyone who feels that emptiness and wounds inside of you i will restore health to you and your wounds i will heal says the lord because they have called you an outcast it is zion no one cares for if anyone feels that you are not cared or supported or helped or and you feel that outcast the lord says i will heal your wounds i am there in you i will help you i will restore health to you and your wounds i will heal 